Well, I love music. I mean, who doesn't? But I've never really been able to pick up a musical instrument and play it. My hat is taken off to anyone who can play anything more than a tambourine. Imagine my excitement then when Sam Aaron introduced me to his software called Sonic Pi, which allows you to program your own music on a Raspberry Pi. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to open Sonic Pi on your Raspberry Pi and how to get started with the basics. I guess I don't need the disco light anymore. Raspberry Pi plus Sonic Pi equals music. For this tutorial you will need your Raspberry Pi and your monitor and your SD card and your keyboard and mouse and everything else that goes with your Raspberry Pi. You will also need the latest version of the Noob software installed on your SD card. So if you're using an old version of Noobs or an old Raspberry image you need to go to the raspberrypi.org website, download the latest version and copy that onto a new SD card. You will also need some headphones or a speaker both of these will need to have um, a connector on them that will fit into the jack sound port on the Raspberry Pi so that you can hear the music that you're going to make. And that's it really. Apart from that, maybe just some imagination. Okay, like I said before, I'm using the latest version of the Raspberry Pi software, Noobs. And you can tell I'm using the new version because we have this lovely new icon at the top for shutting down our Pi. If you navigate to the main menu and you go to programming, you will also see the Sonic Pi application has been added. So if you go ahead and click that, it will open up the application. Once it's loaded, you might want to go ahead and resize your window so that it fills the whole screen. The interface is really easy to get used to in Sonic Pi. You have a play button, a stop button and a save button, and you have a number of worksheets in which you can type your code. To play a note in Sonic Pi, you simply type play, followed by the number of the notes. So I'm gonna play 60. I'm gonna hit play. And in this window, you will see the information from Sonic Pi telling you what's happening. It's playing note 60 with the synth Pretty Bell. If I accidentally misspell play, and I try and run my code, You'll see that nothing happens in the output window, can't hear the sound, and there is an error in this message box below. And if I scroll through and read the error, it will tell you that it is a syntax error and that I've spelled the word play incorrectly. So let's just correct that. So I can go ahead and add um, more notes to play. So if I do play 50, play 54 underneath it, do you think they will play one after the other or do you think they will play at the same time? Well, let's give it a go and see what happens. That sounds more like a chord, more like they're playing at the same time. If I wanted to separate them out, I could do so using the word sleep, followed by how long I wanted it to sleep for. So if I used the number one, that would be one second. If I wanted it to be half a second, then I could use 0 0.5. So now if I hit play, we should hear you can hear the notes playing one after the other. Right, now to play something a little bit more funky. Hmm, do you recognise that song? Well, that's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. If I wanted to repeat this, I could go ahead and just highlight it all, copy that code, paste it underneath, and I could end up with a really, really, really long sequence of instructions for the computer to follow. But I don't really want to do that. I'm going to instead um, put it inside a kind of loop that's going to repeat it over and over again. So I want it to play it twice. So at the top I'm going to write 2 dot times do and then so you can see everything between do and end play twice because I've done 2 dot times. Let's give that a go, see what happens. So that played twice. Nice and easy. Sonic Pi uses MIDI keyboard numbers. So as you can see on this side, here is a picture of a keyboard and next to it and on it are numbers of the notes from that keyboard. And they're actually MIDI keyboard numbers. So what you're able to do um, is you could convert a song like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star 
into the MIDI note numbers. So I've already done C, C, G, G, A, A, G, because that was 60, 60, 67, 67, 69, 69, 67. And using a conversion table like this one, which I just found on the internet by Googling MIDI note numbers, you can convert notes like C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and so on into um, the MIDI note numbers. And I'm using octave five, so I'm using like 60, 67, 69. I'm using this kind of range here. So using a table like this, you could go off and you could convert the rest of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. What else can we do with Sonic Pi? Well, we could change the sounds by adding with underscore synth and then in quotation marks, the name of the synth. So I'm gonna use FM. So if I play this now, it's gonna sound a little bit different than it did before. Oh, kind of scary and creepy kind of twinkle twinkle. That's quite cool. Some synths you can use, um, there's beep, FM, pretty bell, dull bell and saw beep at the moment. Hopefully in future some more sounds will be added to make your music sound really, really cool. And something that I didn't do, which I should have done, is what I should have indented my code. So everything between do and end, I should have indented by two spaces. Um, that way it makes it easier to read. Um, it doesn't do it automatically at the moment. So I'm just gonna have to go in and put in all my indentations so that it is correct. There we go. There may come a time in your music where you want to have two tunes playing at the same time. Imagine if you were playing a keyboard, um, your right hand might be playing one type of tune and your left hand might be playing a different type of tune. Or you might want to have a melody and a bass line. Well, you're able to do this in Sonic Pi using something called threads. So I've used the command in underscore thread do, and I've encased all the tune that I want to play inside a do and an end. And then underneath, I've typed another in underscore thread do with another sequence of code and an end. And if I play this, it will play both tunes together. Okay, so my tune sounds rubbish, but don't let that stop you. Why don't you mess around with some plays and some sleeps and put in some data structures and see what kind of sounds you can come up with. Check out what this guy did. from Robin's code that he is using some extra functionality we've not really talked about so he's commented on some parts um, he's used data structures there's a lot more that Sonic Pi can offer you and I will write more in my blog to let you know if you want to have a go please do maybe send me some of your code and we could have a Sonic Pi special episode take care remember just a mouse click away uh -huh.